Hi, my name is Brian Tittle. I teach history, theology, and computer science for Rupe Virtual Learning Institute, as well as St. John's Jesuit High School in Toledo, Ohio. And today I want to spotlight one of my favorite uh, resources, and that is Google Arts and Culture. This site has been around for a few years, um, but it's really developed into a great repository of arts and cultural artifacts. It's a great resource for history teachers, especially, um, to show these artifacts um, in high quality images, as well as video and uh, 360 degree tours to students. It's a great way to create virtual field trips um, and to really get up close and personal with some of these, um, these cultural artifacts. On the front page of Google Arts and Culture, there's always a curated collection. Um, I am recording this video right now during the George Floyd protests on police brutality that are happening throughout the United States. And so you can see a lot of curated elements that have to do with civil rights history. Some of these are videos, art pieces, um, and even some historical documents. You can see right here uh, Martin Luther King's original text of his I Have a Dream speech. Um, this is the actual speech that's been scanned in for Google Arts and Culture. There are a lot of art pieces that you can explore. Um, some of these are collected into full exhibits with text about the art that walk you through the paintings. For example, if I look up um, there's a, a MoMA collection on Van Gogh's painting Starry Night. And if I click on this online exhibit where you zoom in to Starry Night, you can actually, um, it actually walks you through the painting and explains uh, various details um, of the painting. And what you can see here is that these paintings are scanned in at an incredible resolution. Um, they're basically, it's, it's basically a lifelike resolution. So you can see every brush stroke. You can see the cracks in the, in the paint. Um, and so this one, for example, walks you through this painting, gives you information about its composition, um, as well as Van Gogh's life. You can also do this um, by exploring paintings that you like uh, yourself. So example, I'm going to look at the Return of the Prodigal Son. This is a painting by Rembrandt, and I'm going to uh, click on it right here. And you can see that when you click on the, the zoom, you can zoom into this painting um, in incredible detail. To the point where you're really seeing like one square inch of the painting just expanded. Um, one of my favorites to do this with is uh, Georges Seurat's Sunday in the Park. It's actually, um, there it is, a Sunday on Le Grand Jacques. Um, this is the one, if you remember the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, uh, this is the one that uh, that he stands in front of in the Chicago Museum of Art and zooms in you know, to the eyes of the little girl that is there uh, being walked in the park by her mother. Right, this, this, uh, this pointillist piece. And you can see just how incredible the detail on these pieces are. The other really nice thing about this um, is that for many of these pieces, especially for the more um, well-known pieces from the larger museums, you can actually view the museum in Google Street View. And so you, you'll see on many pieces a button like this that says View in Street View. And when you click on it, it will actually take you to uh, the Street View of that piece at the Chicago Museum of Art, uh, the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, and so you can see it in its museum context, and you can also look at some of the other uh, pieces in that museum. Google Arts and Culture um, also has collected many of these works into exhibitions of their own. So if you want to do something on, for example, Impressionist painting, just search for Impressionism, 
and you can find collections from many different museums, um, but also online exhibits that pull together works from a variety of different museums in order to show a particular artistic movement or period. So we've got, for example, uh, French art from Delacroix to Cézanne. Um, so you can click on that and go through a story uh, about this art that um, really gives, it gives articles about each piece and um, really allows you to explore some of these works. I also like Google Arts and Culture because it provides a lot of artifacts for various historical events. If you click on this uh, menu here, you can see that uh, there are sections devoted to artists, mediums, art music, art movements, historical events, and historical figures. And so if I click here on historical events, um, a lot of different events come up. Um, so if I want information, for example, on the Russian Revolution, I can click here, get information on the revolution, and then there's a number of stories that are connected to uh, the Russian Revolution and um, photographs and other documents that, um, that I might use in my classroom. As a history teacher, I found that the more that you can put primary sources in front of your students, the more interested they are. Because these sources, these images, are a real tangible connection to the history. And Google Arts and Culture allows you to do that um, in a really incredible way. So I hope that this tool is useful for you and um, that you're able to use it in your own classroom. And I encourage you to explore Google Arts and Culture.